In this video we want to talk about succession planning. This is an important topic uh, for businesses, particularly small businesses or family-run businesses, where the appointment of a successor to the manager or to perhaps the original entrepreneur is very important for the continuity of the business. If a successor is not appointed, then when the uh, the person perhaps who originally set up the business or the family member responsible for the business, when that person comes to retire or uh, unfortunately suffers an illness, uh, then there may be an issue about the continuation of the business because there is no one there to, to take over with the appropriate skills and background and knowledge and experience. So succession planning is a very important topic particularly, as I said, for small businesses and for family-run businesses. So, let's look at it. Well, for family businesses, uh, they must take into consideration internal and external pressures and make strategic plans in the event of unforeseen circumstances. Uh, it's important to have succession planning in place, not just uh, given the inevitability of retirement because people when they come to a certain age will want to retire and enjoy the rest of their lives. But it may also be unfortunately the case that illness or some tragedy within the family may affect the family and uh, some sort of contingency has to be in place to make sure the business continues should unfortunately that event take place. So. For that reason uh, also, it's important to have some sort of plan to, to arrange a successor, uh, to have someone trained and ready to take over if the need arises. Succession planning is an important process for family businesses and a very emotional and delicate time for the business. Uh, when particularly a small business, when the, the person who perhaps set it up and who's run it for many years comes to retire or leave the business, it is an emotional time. And someone who inspires confidence and who knows the business and who's been trained by the person leaving, that person has got a, a big duty to reassure the staff and reassure the family and reassure all of the stakeholders of the business that the business will continue and it will continue uh, on the same route, it will continue in the same way. There will not be radical changes that may uh, disrupt the, the processes of the business or lead to insecurity or lead to um, uh, problems uh, amongst the staff. The sooner the business plan for succession, the easier the transfer and the transition. So it's important to have succession planning uh, arranged at an early uh, phase, that there is someone ready right from the start almost to, to take over, someone who's trained, who knows the business, who knows the culture of the business, who knows the stakeholders, who knows their preferences, someone in place who uh, is skilled within the business and who is capable of taking over even at short notice. Now the need for a succession strategy, well, according to Hodgetts and Curato, uh, Curato sorry, uh, 1998, succession strategy requires the following consideration. Understanding the contextual aspects, identifying successor qualities, and carrying out uh, the succession plan. So there are three big areas we need to to look at here. Understanding context, uh, the contextual aspects. Well, first of all, look at the time. Uh, time, is, time is a crucial variable in looking at succession planning. When is the right time for the person to leave? When has the successor been adequately trained? Uh, what are the issues that are still vague and, and need to be addressed. So 
timing is important. It, it's it's important to give an adequate time scale so that adequate training can be given but at the same time perhaps not drag it on too long because that may lead to frustration in the mind of the person being trained to take over if they've been trained to take over they know what needs to be done but they're not uh, allowed to do it so that could be a frustrating time for them the type of venture is also important um, it depends on, on the type of business uh, if it's a traditional business making traditional products and sold in traditional markets then uh, the pace of change may be a lot slower but if it's a high-tech business then clearly the environment is changing at a, a very rapid rate and the issue of getting the training done uh, is not just sufficient it, it needs to be updated continuously so the person selected for succession planning would have to be uh, selected for their suitability for continuous training because the environment is changing so rapidly but if it is a traditional business with traditional skills perhaps artisan skills then it may it may take a, a, a slower pace so it depends on the type of venture and the capabilities of the managers uh, the the person who set up the business who perhaps is thinking of retiring and now looking to uh, for, for to engage in succession planning um, that person may not be skilled in training the person may not have the the right qualities as a trainer to to train his or her successor and the person selected to succeed may not have the capability or the aptitudes to receive all that's been passed in terms of knowledge and skills and background so there has to be uh, there has to be some mechanism to ensure that the communications and understanding between the two uh, is accurate and is also good quality it's sufficient for the successor to take over so, so the successor should be selected as a good receiver of information and the person doing the training the person who is uh, looking to perhaps retire that person should be a good communicator of information and a failure on that front will lead to a failure in the whole process it may be if they're aware of their own shortcomings that they uh, request the support of other agencies to to help them to to bridge any misunderstandings or uh, any complications that they encounter entrepreneur's vision well sometimes the person setting up a business will have a vision for the business and uh, because he or she is an entrepreneur not many people will understand the the vision uh, entrepreneurs tend to have a, a very unique perspective and they see clearly what needs to be done they can see the niche in the market um, they can spot the the gap others can't do that so it's not really possible for an entrepreneur to pass on that ability to a successor the successor in that sense will be more of a manager than an entrepreneur whereas the person handing over the reins may have been an entrepreneur who became a manager and is now trying to attempt to hand on the business but hand on the the managerial aspects of the business not the entrepreneurial side the entrepreneurial side has now passed so it's difficult for the entrepreneurs to communicate the vision what they can communicate are the managerial and the 
the operational end of the business, the processes that must be under under undertaken to uh, ensure that the business succeeds and and that uh, the business runs. There are also, of course, environmental factors at play. Um, uh, not just in terms of uh, the uh, issues within the business. There are issues outside the business. The competitors, for example, will be aware that uh, the company is entering a phase of transition. Now that is uh, uh, possibly a problem for the company because they become more vulnerable in phases of trans transitions. They become um, th they're seen as as distracted. They are handing over to someone else, and the competitors may may now spot the the chance to to pounce and to to uh, exploit uh, a weakness in in the person taking over. So there are all sorts of other issues we could talk about in terms of environmental factors, but you can see that it's not just confined to within the uh, organization. There are factors outside of the organization that are also germane. Let's go across these in a little more detail. Uh, time. As I said earlier, time is an important factor. The business owner managers must start the succession phase as early as possible. Um, the earlier it starts, the better, but with the proviso that it doesn't lead to frustration on the part of the person being trained to take over. Uh, if it does, that person may become so frustrated that they want to leave, which, of course, uh, ruins the whole exercise. It destroys the exercise. They have to start again. The sooner they begin the search for the next uh, leadership team, the better chances of finding the right person. Well, that's that's a good point. But as I said again, the the danger is that they find the right person uh, they start to train the right person and then the, the person who is in charge decides to uh, hang on for an extra year or hang on for an extra five years. Uh, the person who's been trained will now know the business intimately and will know what needs to be done but has not got the authority to do it because the reins have not been handed over yet. And that can lead to frustration as I said. Sudden succession process can take place if unforeseen circumstances arise, for example, death, sudden illness, psychological breakdown, um, legal problems or financial difficulties. Uh, but it's always best to have someone ready just in case, to take over just in case that were to happen. Now the types of venture. Well, the types of business venture determines the likelihood of appointing a successful successor. Uh, I mentioned earlier the traditional types versus the more high-tech type business and the, the types of skills and competencies that the successor would need to have. A business owner who is highly skilled within their industry will find it very difficult to appoint the right person as a successor. If the business person is highly skilled um, and is working in quite a, a sophisticated niche market that person will find it difficult to find someone to hand over. It will be difficult to find someone with those same skill sets and, and the, that, that same ability. A successor can be appointed fairly quickly if the job requires minimal operations and minimal knowledge and skills. But it depends on the type of venture. If it's if it's rapidly changing because of technology, as I said, and it's a question of keeping up to date all the time, it'll be very difficult to find a replacement. If it's a, a highly skilled job, a very technical job, very intricate, difficult to find a replacement. But if it's one which is low skill, more routine, 
then of course there will be plenty uh, to pick from. The capability of the managers, well, skills, capabilities, ambition and desires of the successor, uh, each one is an important factor. The, the successor must have minimal skills, to, to, the, the minimal skills necessary to run the business. Uh, they must have the capability, they must also want it, they must desire it. But for the business to prosper and to to maintain itself in the market, sometimes the successor will have to be capable of looking forward and anticipating competition, and anticipating rivals and, and engaging in the competitive process to try and beat the rivals and uh, develop new products and innovate and uh, so the skill set is quite sophisticated and that makes it difficult to arrange proper succession. The, the successor must be able to adapt to changing markets and industry conditions as I said. Uh, generally speaking markets don't stay the same customers requirements are ever changing so again a person with the right abilities and aptitudes will be needed it is important to appoint a successor who has the right attitude and is able to grow the business through their passion so it's it's very important that the the person who's appointed has the interest of the business at heart, who wants it to succeed, wants it to grow, wants it to prosper, and will do everything that he or she can to ensure the the safety and the health of the business. But for that to happen, they must have the right motivations. Entrepreneur's vision, well, it's important for the new successor to share the same vision and goals as the owner, the one who is retiring. It's important for the, uh, for the successor to empathize with the, the person leaving the, uh, the business. Empathize, uh, know what he or she was doing, know what uh, their aspirations were, know the processes that they were engaged in, know how they managed to grow the business the way they did, uh, understand the path they have travelled, the direction they have come from and, and try to emulate what they have done, albeit in a new set of circumstances because the markets are changing. The successor must be able to grow the business to achieve growth and goals. So there is pressure not just to take over the business and keep it where it is. The pressure is to take over the business and grow the business from where it is. Grow it from where it is to something much better and ensure its continuance into the future. The environmental factors I mentioned earlier, well, I didn't really get into them very much there, so let's look at them again. Uh, successors may be required to deal with changing environmental conditions and internal pressures. It's always the case that um, uh, companies face changing circumstances as customers' needs change and requirements change, and when we see the onset of new ideas and innovations and uh, product change and they, the world is changing rapidly because of the way in which we work um, and the successor must be able to chart out new routes for the business which will be different from what his or her successor had but chart out the routes that will enable the business to continue under a new set of constraints.
the new ways of working, the new requirements of the customer, the competitive pressure from globalization and from uh, other parts of industry. The successor may have to uh, update skills and knowledge which might benefit the growth of the business. So the successor is not expected to stand still. The successor must be engaged in some sort of almost lifelong learning. The successor must be uh, involved in trying to develop him or herself in the context of the requirements of the business. Some organizations appoint financial experts to take over control and review existing survival strategies. It's quite common for uh, particularly smaller businesses for a family member perhaps skilled in accountancy or in finance to take over the business. Um, that's quite acceptable providing the person taking over understands that his or her expertise is in one area which may not be the core activity of the business. So experts will have to be brought in to ensure that the core activity, the, the production of a certain product or the uh, production of a, a certain service is to the required standard and meets market requirements. So we can see from this video that there's uh, quite a lot to succession planning. It's not just a question of picking someone and uh, uh, training them up. There is a lot more to be taken into account in terms of selection and uh, preparation for the handover. But that's all we're going to deal with in this particular video. The source of the material is the um, the Hodgetts and Coratco um, reference that I mentioned earlier, Effective Small Business Management. But that's all we're going to deal with, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.